Welcome, I'd like to go through Hattie's aim and methods in Visible Learning 2009. In the preface, Hattie goes to, great, uh, goes to a great deal of explanation to say that what he's trying to do is to separate the complexity of teaching into individual separate influences that he then wants to measure these individual influences and then compare them in a meaningful way. He does say this is a speculative notion. What's an influence? He defines an influence as any effect on student achievement, for example, class size, drugs, summer school, etc. A number of peer reviews have, have problems with this general notion. Uh, it's not specific enough. For example, Bergeron, in his 2017 paper, uh, shows that had he mixes up two different sorts of studies, one, the sorts of studies that he wants to look at, which is looking at a particular influence and its effect on academic success and secondly just general studies conducted on these factors. Hattie combines both. Hattie goes to great pains to say it's not a what works recipe but rather it's a what works best. He repeats this a number of times throughout the introduction in the book. The reason that he says this is because he, Hattie claims that almost anything in the classroom works and so to get some distinction he wants to know what works best. Um, although the nuance between what works and what works best is is very subtle and even Hattie himself gets con often confused in when he presents about these topics uh, and even his commercial partnership with Corwin uh, they publish a what works video so even they get this this nuance confused. Hattie says when teachers claim they're having a positive effect on achievement or when a policy improves achievement this is almost always a trivial claim Virtually everything works. One only needs a pulse and we can improve achievement. A lot of teachers have taken that as a derogatory statement. Um, I'd prefer that Hattie remove that from his book. Uh, in addition, Hattie's claim that virtually everything works has come under fire from a lot of peer reviews. For example, the feedback studies show that 40% of feedback studies show that it doesn't work, um, that students, depending on the feedback, get a negative or decrease their achievement. He then goes to great pains to explain what his Visible Learning book is not about and strangely he says it's not about classroom life and does not speak of the nuances in the classroom. He also goes to great pains to say that the book is not about what cannot be influenced in a school such as class, poverty, family resources etc. But many school districts use Hattie's book to define and to control what happens in the classroom. For example, my education department has released its 10 high impact teaching strategies called the HITS to 50,000 or more teachers which define what happens in the classroom uh, and detail nuances as well. So that in itself is a bit of a contradiction. And further contradictions, Hattie does include the things that he said he wasn't going to include. He includes home environment, socioeconomic status, etc. He gives them a rank and an effect size. So whilst he said he doesn't want to include those in his studies, they're clearly in his rankings. His focus is on achievement um, and he does say that that's a limitation of his book. The key question is, is how is achievement measured and he doesn't really go into that in his book but that turns out to be a major problem as many peer reviews have found. What they've found is that depending upon how achievement is measured you can get a totally different number or a totally different effect size. In particular, if you use a standardized test versus a specific subject test, you get very different results. So a number of peer reviews have shown you can get a 400% increase in the effect size if a specific subject test is used rather than a standardized test. That's something that Hattie uh, has not taken into account in his work. Once again, his focus is what works best. So to do this, he uses a particular sort of study called a meta-analysis which is just a, an overarching study that grabs multiple individual studies and tries to summarize them and put them together. Hattie uses one statistic or he actually used two um, but the major st statistic was the effect size. Now that's just equivalent to a Z score which we teach year 11 students in maths here in Melbourne and I'll go into more detail about how the effect size is calculated in the next video. He then averages all these effect sizes or numbers to get one result for each influence. And this is what determines what works best. 
An example is his influence feedback. Hattie cites 20 meta-analysis, or about 20. One of them is the Stanley 1996 study. Stanley summarized 98 separate studies, and what he was looking at was the effect of background music, mostly on behavior. So they weren't looking at achievement at all, which contradicts another one of Hattie's claims. Here's an example of uh, some of the studies that Stanley used. We've got a, a study on older folks who have depression. Uh, the researchers are measuring the number of the amount of complaining that those people do. They're playing contingent music in the background to see if it reduces the complaining. And the high effect size, that's a very large number in terms of effect size, means that complaining is decreased when background music is played. Um, another study that Stanley used is on adult males working on a production line, playing music in the background once again, and there's some rather large effect sizes, so for the 7.6 is a huge effect size. Uh, Hattie then averages all of these separate effect sizes, combines them all together to get one average effect size for feedback for, for the Stanley. So this is what he publishes in his appendix. The Stanley study, Hattie says, has an overall average of 2.87, which is quite large. There, the other meta-analysis that Hattie uses, and he derives an effect size from each of these. That's the mean column there. He averages all of these then to get the one result for feedback. So feedback um, is ranked number 10th because that average is 0.73. So this is what works best. So what works best is he's ranked number one, which is self-report grades with a very high effect size of 1.44. The other thing Hattie claims is this effect size number, his hinge point is 0.4. Um, he believes that the reason for that is because most of the study that Hattie uses when he averages them, he gets an average of 0.4. So anything above 0.4 is what he calls in his zone of desired effects. Anything below 0.4, Hattie's used a whole range of ways to describe uh, influences that are less than 0.4. Sometimes he's called them disasters if they're low. He's called them also rands. He's, called, he's said all sorts of things, um, which uh, I've detailed in my blog. The other thing he says, which is really important about 0.4, is that it's equivalent to a year's growth of a student. Um, and that's a little bit problematic because then he goes further to say then, that if students don't achieve 0.4 in a year, they're going backwards. He takes that even another step further by saying that teachers who don't achieve 0.4 are below average. Um, major implications to that, particularly in the debate about performance pay. Hattie's promoted this model to indicate performance pay, and he was widely criticised in New Zealand where he tried to get this model up and running. Uh, thankfully, the New Zealand Education Union uh, put a stop to it, um, and it didn't go any further. And had he stopped uh, using this this sort of language, uh, which is a good thing, I think. The other statistic that he used was a thing called the common language effect size, which is a probability st statistic. Had he gives his justification for it on page nine. Um, after the book, though, a number of peer reviews showed that all these calculations were wrong, because had he was getting probabilities greater than one hundred percent. Uh, for any year 9 or year 10 student, uh, they know that you can't get a probability more than 100%. Um, it took Hattie a while, but he's admitted that all these are wrong, and I believe he's removed that particular calculation from his book. So he's now focusing on this hinge point of FX size of 0.4. So Hattie ends his book with a ranking of influences, which, deter which indicates what works best. So I've already seen the top 13, as I've just said, that uh, feedback is 10th. Um, and then the bottom 13, you can see the effect size number is getting smaller until we get a negative effect size, which indicates that achievement is decreasing. And so Hattie implies that if a school spends time on welfare policies, student achievement will go backwards. Uh, those highlighted influences, I've gone into detail and have had a look at the studies that Hattie's used to come to those these conclusions. And if you look at the detail, I think you'd be surprised. I was very surprised at what I found. Um, and I, I really highly recommend that you look at the details of those studies. But now Hattie, in 2018, seems to have done a 
a complete turnabout. He says in his 2017 paper that um, something that teachers have been saying all along that the classroom is way too complex to be able to separate things out individually and then compare them. And then he confirms this is in 2018 podcast with Ollie Lovell, where when when questioned he said about his rankings it worked, then it got misleading, so I stopped it. So that's a pretty big change from his rankings. Then his, his commercial partnership with the international company Corwin, he's made a subtle change to to say that effect sizes now indicate probability or potential. Uh, but there's still major problems with that because that's like saying getting an average of 3.5 on a dice is a probability statement. It's not. Um, it's related to a probability statement, but you need way more information in, a, in, a, in order to be able to work out exactly what the probability is. Well, that's sort of typical of Hattie's work, in my opinion, that he's sort of half right in a lot of things and that causes uh, many of his statements to be misleading. Um, and given he made all those mistakes on the CLE probability calculations, I'm not confident that this latest interpretation uh, is valid. So the Corwin uh, website publishes a colour coding indicating a potential to improve achievement and they list the individual influence with an effect size with the colour indicating the probability or the potential for improving academic achievement. For my methods today, it's interesting, I've looked at the Corwin website to get their colour coding so that these are very low effect sizes indicating that the probability is low that my methods will work. Um, inter it's interesting to note that the Australian of the Year was a maths teacher, a, a teacher called Eddie Wu, who started a YouTube channel called Wu Tube, where he basically does worked examples on a video so that his students can then replay the video. It's received worldwide recognition to the extent that uh, he re received the Australian of the Year award. So that in itself sort of runs against these probability statements that, that Corwin and Hattie promote. But Hattie's even done a more of a twist where he's now saying it's not the numbers, it's the story or the detail or the complexity behind the numbers. Um, that's something that teachers have been saying all along as well. Um, so he said that in his interview with Ollie Lovell again, and Lovell questions him on this effect size of 0.4 being a year's growth, and then Hattie claims, that's too simplistic, I would not do that, forgetting that that's exactly what his 2009 book and his subsequent writing in 2010 and 2012 did do. Um, and then once again in the, in the Lovell's interview he says, it's not the numbers, it's the story, the story, the story. So a remarkable change from the original book. So it's hard to interpret these effect sizes now given these different explanations, uh, most of which are very uh, contradictory. So in summary, Hattie defines and influences any effect on student achievement. He did aim to separate the complexity of education into separate influences, CG feedback, ability grouping, class size. Hattie did claim that you could use the effect size statistic to compare these in a meaningful way and determine what works best. He used a particular method called the meta-analysis, which combines lots of studies together. He then averages all of these meta-analysis. This resulted in his rankings, but he's done a complete turnaround in saying his rankings are misleading, and now it's the story, the story, the story. Thank you. What we'll go into next is how the effect size is calculated. Thank, 